love line coast to coast ba 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 hey everybody it's love line i'm adam corolla that is uh, dr drew over there dr drew board certified physician addiction medicine specialist phone number for love line 1-800 love 191 Doug and Dan are both here from, now let me pronounce this right, Uba Stank? Huba. Huba. It's an H. Oh, but shouldn't that H be silent <laughs> somehow? You can't articulate, you can't articulate <laughs> yourself any better than that. <laughs> Uba Stank is uh, in the house tonight. We uh, saw Huba Stank when we were assigning calendars over in uh, lovely, lovely, beautiful Hawthorne, home of the uh, no-discount stereo store, Drew, you <laughs> son of a bitch. I got the discount. <laughs> Drew, uh, serious, l- listen to this move, Drew, Drew Poles. We, Drew is, um, what, you half Jew, Drew? Yeah. I think you're one and a half Jew. <laughs> As Drew goes insane, you know, Drew's like, we can get a discount from the store manager. I'm like, what are you buying? He, he's buying his daughter a $159 boom box. Yeah. You get 10% off. You save $15. Huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> and Drew's going nuts. Like, let's get in there. Let's, let, let, let's get into the Best Buy. I, there's the manager. We can get something. So I'm buying three, 400 bucks worth of stuff. I got my stuff all laid out, ready to pay for it. Drew pays for his stuff, gets the discount, then says to the manager... Hey, where's the bathroom? And the guy goes, oh, I'll show you. And he walks Drew to the back of the store. Meanwhile, his buddy rings me up at full price. And, oh. and I get no discount. Drew, it was like something, it was really something out of a movie. It was like you distracted. Yeah, you, you, th- you thought it was sort of coincidental. You actually took the guy who was going to give me the discount away from the register you right did, at the time. You took him he so was, you could schmooze with him, huh? Adam, you fell for the banana in the tailpipe. Mm, yeah, it was uh, brutal. Well, maybe the guy just said, hey, you have the smaller purchase. I'll give you the discount, mm. but just distract, you know, make it look like when Adam's buying all that stuff. <laughs> Speaking of the, uh, yeah, the banana in the tailpipe is another one. That Drew does. <laughs> that when we're on the road, but that's that's a little bizarre. I don't even know how you knew about that one. Too. But I, uh, sources. I think uh, I think what we should do with uh, Huba Stank is uh, hear the song okay. of theirs uh, that I love so much because uh, they're a new <laughs> band. Even though <laughs> what's your theme? No, this no theme Huba song? Stank is not my theme song. Okay, but um, that's your theme. Song. This is my theme song. This is a great record. This is yeah. But but Huba Stank is the one I've been going. This is a great. This yeah. is a great riff. Yeah. And it may soon soon become my new theme song. All right. What do we got to do to make it your new theme song? Mm, nothing. Okay. <laughs> Let's, Take we'll, him to the back to that Best Buy. We'll just we'll just. Uh, I can get you some discounts there. We'll just make it my new uh, theme song. Sorry, I'm all sweaty. I was I was actually exercising mm-hmm. and I ran out of time and uh, that's I'm all uh, sweaty and covered with stuff. So <laughs> let's uh, let's hear something from uh, Huba Stank. You got it. Uh, Cute up there, Anderson. This is called Crawling in the Dark. <laughs> my, my new theme Ow! song. Uba Stank, everybody. <laughs> You're still saying it without with, with, I with said Huba. <laughs> I, I gave half an H. I gave like a small H on that Huba. We should put an H in front of his name, Hadam. Stank. Yeah, <laughs> that'll remind me. House of Blues, everybody. Is that uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Yeah. Who are you going to be there with? Uh, Just you? No, we're playing with, uh, well, it's our, it's our CD release party. Oh, and but where there's a band called uh, Lost Prophets from oh. Wales, really S- some really cool guys, yeah, and another band called um, Handsome, Handsome Devil. Devil from Orange County. Both really cool bands. We've been touring with them for about a month. Oh, good. Well, uh, tomorrow night are there are there tickets available? No, no. Oh, all right. But they well, should go down there anyways it. and try to break in. Yeah, I, I think that would be make, make you guys feel good if someone got hurt outside. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some scalpers down there. Really? Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Most bands say, and Drew, uh, stop me if I'm wrong, but where there's a will, there's a way. To get as in. As far as sold out shows and yeah. things go, I right? Agree. I agree. Yeah. If you want to get in bad enough tomorrow, I'm sure you'll find a way. Right. You just get there and Don't you, they, just, you, you just walk in. They almost always release <clears throat> a couple dozen seats somewhere, sometime, right? Somebody's holding some seats that they. Psh- Hopefully. I don't, I don't know. I, I think the important thing is is to. When you go and try to get into a place that you're not supposed to go <clears throat> get into, pretend like you own the place. Mm. That's, I mean, that's don't, so don't true. I used around. to sneak into concerts all we the time. We used to do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I would go to concerts and and find the uh, the excess part of a of a wristband. And, right. and, and just collect them and I would tape them together and put them around my wrist <laughs> and I'd walk through the backstage entrance all like, the time like, yeah, like it was... we, we would do that stuff all the time well I know like the best way to steal something is when you forget <laughs> you're holding it 
and you walk out of the store because <laughs> you're totally relaxed. Like, you stop and look around and talk to people mm-hmm. while you're holding it in your hand. And if you knew you were stealing you'd it, be so you'd, nervous. you'd be sweating bullets and yeah. you'd get busted. But if you sort of have, if you have bravado and attitude, you'll get by. I, I like the uh, I like the pieces of, of wristband idea mm-hmm. though. It works. All right. You know what also yeah. works? If you uh, if you go to amusement parks and you scribble a little bit of the uh, fluorescent marker on your hand and scrape it around like that. You can bit. re-enter that way. You can, yeah. can pass it into the thing. Yeah. I used, to, I used to stand outside of Universal Studios. <laughs> this is a true story. I used to stand outside of Universal Studios with a, a fluorescent highlighter pen <laughs> and I'd find people that were looking at the ticket prices and I would tell them that I can get them in for $10 instead of $30. And uh, and I would give them a little <clears throat> right there on the right on the right on their hand. I would do that to them, and I'd walk and them it in. Worked. And I would tell them that they didn't have to pay me until I walked them in, and and I, I made like hundred and fifty dollars in a day. Jesus Christ! And then Doug and I got caught one time. Yeah, I happened? got caught because I was walking through with it. What happened? They pulled me aside and like. Oh, that's not the right. It was like completely wrong color. It was like we had a yellow marker. I'm already was, in the park, and this guy. He was caught. already in the park, and they pull me aside, and I'm trying to talk my way out of this. Oh, oh, this is you know. Hey, you know what they th- gave me. This brings up an interesting point, which <clears> especially <throat> with current events going on, uh, we worry so much about security, but. What about exploiting it for our advantage? You know what I mean? <laughs> Why shouldn't we take some of these, uh, you know, $6 an hour retards and really make them work for us? <laughs> We're so worried about terrorists. Why don't we hop in on this gravy train? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Amusement parks, concerts, things like that. I'm with you. Bring machetes on to planes. What's, what's, I mean, I'm saying <laughs> let's make lemonade out of lemons. Drew, are you with me? Uh, I'm, I'm Drew, not. you never broke. I've broken into Universal Studios. No, can't Never say done that? that? No. You know, I Man, used, you're missing out. I used to go through Victoria <laughs> Station, that oh, restaurant. Long ago. We, we broke in there oh, one we, time <laughs> in my car. This was another we time. Drove- we were, I was driving in my car, and I got in the back lots. And I had I hid Doug and two of my other friends under some blankets <laughs> in the back of my car. And we, and we drove got, around every place. The we psycho could. house. We, we you're fought, I went inside we went the psycho in, house. We got it on videotape. And Is we there were, anything in there? No, it's just no. Uh, wood. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, we got this videotape of us following a tram around like in a circle. <laughs> and everybody's just videotaping us. And we're like videotaping them. <laughs> we ran around the back, the back of the future. Sounds like set. a new video. Mm, all right. Let's uh, take some calls and uh, speak to Amanda, who's 20. Amanda? Yes. What's up? Well, um, me and my boyfriend have been having sex. Oh, <coughs> oh sorry. Right. <laughs> anyway, every time that we do, we use a condom. And um, no matter what brand of condom we use, I always get an infection with it. And mm. I don't know. I don't. And know. Have you had sex without condoms? Yeah, I have. And do you get if infections then? No. So it's really just condom? Yeah. Have you tried the polyurethane condom? The what? Polyurethane? No, I haven't. How about animal skin? No. <laughs> All right. So you, you really haven't tried the different... Tried every different kind of condom <laughs> except, except for, except for the, the other solution. 66% of the kinds of condoms. Right. Except the other two kinds. <laughs> right. Uh, I've really never heard of them, so I didn't. Not right. even half. You may have some sort of latex allergy or sensitivity, and you do need to check these other types out. Are you worried about infectious mm. uh, STDs with this guy? No. It's just for birth control? Yeah. Then One, go check out polyurethane and animal skin. Why don't, why don't you get on the pill? I, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> and that would be the next thing. Why, why not get on some more reliable means of contraception? I'd look, in, uh, look into it, too. Yeah. And he's, oh, he was such, as, such, right? such as it is. You're on the pill now? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. My, my, my Your breasts are bigger. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> he, was, he was a small B. Small B <laughs> no, when I saw that. No. Small, swear, swear to Christ, small B. He's a healthy they hurt? C. Healthy C. Now now. That, when I jog, my, my, my boobies... <laughs> And you know, sports bras take care of that. The, uh, yeah, man, he doesn't know if people like him because uh, of his right. music now. Boobies or... just sound so funny coming out of a guy's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when when you're turning uh, your breasts, his boobies are hurt. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, go. Amanda, here you go. The uh, morning after pill is something you need to keep around nonetheless because those condoms fail once in a while. And if they do, you can take this contraceptive after the fact. That'll prevent that from becoming a pregnancy, okay? All right. All, All right, right there. Animal skin, polyurethane. And Adam, why do we bother? Why, why animal skin? Why must we call them that? I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, it, it's gut, right? Yeah. Animal they, innards? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Make it it's like haggis on your junk. <laughs> <laughs> Dip your junk in haggis. <laughs> well, what? It, it's it's stum- It's lining. It's intestine. It's, it's penis haggis. Is it? Ironically, yeah. is it the stuff that sausage casing? Essentially, I mean sausage. I really, casing honestly, is, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, they used to make you know string uh, tennis rackets with. Did they use cat gut? Yeah. It was ca- yeah. 
Why cats? I'm, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> You're right. What are they doing? <laughs> Sitting around hawking up fur I balls know. and uh, scratching up <laughs> furniture. Why not? Yeah, c- tennis rackets out of cat, you know. And, uh, you know, they used to do bladders, like in soccer balls, out of animal stuff. And pig bladders, yeah. All right, good times. All well, right. I guess they, called, <laughs> those, times, they called those pig skins, even when they were bladders. So what right, so find out, Drew, find out, or somebody tell us what part of the sheep this condom is made out of. Yeah. And, my God, doesn't it seem like you would, wouldn't you want, like, $400 a condom if you were manufacturing condoms out of <clears throat> sheep gut? Why? What do you mean? I mean, wouldn't it? You couldn't charge it. How are you going to make a profit at a buck fifty a condom when you're having to manufacture them out of this material? It must be something that they cast away otherwise. Some byproduct? Something, yeah, something they wouldn't it's like deal with. Call no, them I, hot dogs, you know? Just I, like all the leftovers. Right, oh, there. I see. See, yeah. I was thinking they, they, like sheep they raise sheep, they just take this one <laughs> six-inch part of their intestine and throw away the rest of the body. The, they, <laughs> make, the they make rackets out of the rest of the body now. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, uh, is that Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. What's up there, Jamie? Huh, nothing. What's up with you? You're 18. You spell your name with uh, two E's that way? Oh, uh, she didn't ask me how to spell it. Oh, okay. Think What's that's a typo. Okay. Okay. Um, I've been going out with my boyfriend for like two months now, and um, like I've met his family and everything and gone over there like all the time, and he's like against meeting my family, and he's like also like really distant towards me like he won't be like affectionate towards me at all it's like all on me and i don't Do not hmm. kiss me <laughs> how, how long have you been with him um about, about almost two months maybe he's not ready to sort of move it along that way maybe he's afraid that you're going to get the wrong idea in terms of how committed he is well i know like in his last relationship he really got hurt and i know he might want to get slow well whatever let's forget about take it out of that and just look at his action in the present Okay. He doesn't want to be overly committed. He doesn't want to get this moving too quickly. He doesn't want to f- you to feel like you're, you know, taking him home to m- meet everybody, and that he has to feel the pressure of a commitment. Yeah, he's like, he's like, well, I don't like to meet the parents, but I mean, if you're dating me, you know, it's eventually going to have to happen. Mm. Well, he's older too. That's what I think. Like, he's 22. how much older? He's twenty two. Mm. Well, it's interesting well, that's that, that she he brought her home, <clears throat> which is usually uh, even a later stage thing. Yeah, well, he lived with his mom. But then again, if, well, he made, his, if he his folks probably think he's gay. So I was like, say, hey, mom, look, 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 vagina. Look, I'm banging it. You're right. He doesn't shut want, up. He doesn't want to deal with. I had sh- to do that. He doesn't well, deal with the shame of meeting her parents and then disappointing them if he breaks up with her. You see. Well, no, but no guy wants to meet anyone's parents. I don't know. I think it just adds more pressure. You know, yeah. like like you yeah. said. Yeah. And plus, it, is a guy. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Uh, no, I, I'm I was, banging your daughter. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's I, what I, I say all the time. Beautiful yeah. blowjob. Swallows. Thank you, Miss. Is that <laughs> something? Is that? How, what, what a nature nurture. Thank you. I, I was Thank with you. a girl w- for for five years, and I hated going to her house. It's always you feel, weird. You feel, feel yeah, guilty. I, I just always felt weird around. Uh, no. Afraid Dad's gonna just take out a clock. Here. Well, I mean. Her dad wasn't the, wasn't the coolest guy, but it was just it was kind of uncomfortable, you know? Well, why did you feel weird about it? Because um, her dad was kind of a dick. <laughs> and he was... I assume that. Wasn't he? Wasn't he, Doug? He was just... He was yes. just I didn't like her No, her no, mom. seriously. It, it can be intimidating, especially. Yeah, even, her, her, even if dad isn't a dick, <clears throat> there's a certain amount of guilt I think guys have. Well, like, how long do you think I should give him? Because, I mean, I just feel weird. Because, like, I'm all, like, cuddly and affectionate towards him, and I feel stupid if he just, like, sits there, you know? Um, well, he may not be... you got to have a conversation with him about where you think this relationship is going. He may just be sort of... They, they have... What does that book call this? Uh, good for now. This is just good for now <clears throat> for him. And if that's not what you want, you better... Uh, all right. Move on. So let's just Drop few, the hammer. Few, few different levels. A guys are a little weirded out because they've spent the last six months trying to talk you into anal, <laughs> and now they're breaking bread with dad. Yeah. Okay. You know. So that, that well, that's always a weird one. But women B number two. That's weird. Uh, well, here's the other thing. I think, and and I think most guys will agree with this. You look at a situation like hanging with their parents as lose lose. There's no there's no win in it. Meaning. Uh, there, there's just nothing good that could come of it. You, it the best yeah. thing you'll do is break even. Right. <clears throat> like you'll yeah, walk yeah, away yeah. going, I yeah, he, he's all right. I'll see him next year. <laughs> but you could really screw up, or they, or they could screw up. But why wouldn't a woman understand that that's weird for a guy? Isn't that, isn't that funny? Doesn't that happen to girls too? You know, if they don't want to like 
go that like be that committed in a relationship and not they don't want to bring every guy they meet you know or have been dating for a little bit home to meet the whole family i mean it's just, right but she it makes that it makes it that much i think it's more the statement of he doesn't want to do it i think it would be all right if he didn't do it as long as she thought he would do it or is it that if a woman's dating a guy more than a few weeks they're all the way in well, guys can still and that be sort of limbo, good enough for. Well, it's a good it's a good point. There's that weird window from like uh, I don't know August to uh, <laughs> August to like February. Yeah. No, 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 not August, not August to February. Wait, if you start dating someone in like August, September, then it gets weird around the holidays, holidays because yeah. you're too close. Yeah. It's a weird window. Now, if you started dating them in May. You're definitely in for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and if you started dating them in November, you're out for Thanksgiving because it's only been three weeks. But you start working that, that August-September window, and it's all weird around Christmas and Thanksgiving. Especially if for, you're, for just, guys. you're just in it to get laid, and it's been five and a half weeks. And, you know. and, and I don't think a woman would stay in a relationship just to get laid. All right. Not like that. All right. so they, they don't understand what the guy's doing. They can't imagine it. Hey, speaking of holidays, you, you have not. You've, you've been, I'm sorely disappointed in you this year, Adam. Hmm. No, right. Ooh. Cranberries, yeah. yes. <laughs> hey, you you want to save that for David Allen Greer tomorrow night, or you want to do a little bit of that tonight? Well, I, uh, <laughs> tomorrow I will give my recipe for cranberry sauce, and I, I will just say this. People think it's okay to open a can of cranberries on Thanksgiving. And it's gotten to the point where a lot of folks even enjoy the canned stuff just because they have low self-esteem or they're stupid or it's something <laughs> they, were, they were reared on. But I, I would like, like spam to... I, 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 yes, I would like <clears throat> to reverse this ugly trend of people opening cans around the holidays. And especially, they, they cook everything by hand. They spend all day in the kitchen and at the end of the day, there goes that can of cranberries. And I, I now bring cranberry sauce with me to Thanksgiving events. I pulled some out. My, How do you uh, make it? Oh, see, this this is the... Uh, I'm glad you asked that, Doug, <laughs> because <laughs> this is the part that really steams my bean. Here's how you make cranberry sauce. Mm. You take a sack of cranberries. 99 cents. Yes. You know the, the loose, whole cranberries you see around this time of year? You put that sack of cranberries into a uh, small pot with about a cup or two of water in it. Oh, and then you take like half a cup of sugar and you dump in there. You put the lid on it. You bring it to a boil in about six minutes. And then when it cools off, it's cranberry sauce. Pow. It is. Oh, it is boom. It oh, is easier than. So it, it is, it is right as now. easy <laughs> as easy as making like top ramen or craft macaroni you can and in, cheese. Mix in some walnuts and. It, yeah, you could put a, you put Wait, a you little put lemon zest. Sauce? You, you could. Not, you, you could do some lemon peel or whatever. But the point is... is <laughs> Not if it's out of the can. That's the point. Right, right, right. right. For the We're anti-can here. I get this. For the amount of time it, 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 it takes you to make a Kraft macaroni and cheese, you could easily make fresh cranberry sauce that is delectable. Or you could get the canned stuff that's serrated. You know, it actually has the shape of the can in yeah, it, yeah, like dog like in food. jelly form. Oh, what is up with people in that? It drives me insane. The point is, is if I can do it, anyone can do it. There you go. That's my point. Uh, t <laughs> tomorrow, I'm really going to get a good recipe going, though. So you'll you'll want to be listening. Ian, that was great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Enlightening the world. That's good. <laughs> In your uh, your fifteen tomorrow night, I'm going to do twenty minutes on why yeah. pie should replace cake at birthday. No, no. Yes. Oh, let's, yes. Let's just talk about the type of pie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Ian. Adam, you're a genius. <laughs> I, I love you, man. Thank you. All right, and uh, Drew, mm -hmm. leave the show. It's got to be just the Adam show. That would, that would boost ratings so yeah. high. <laughs> wow. Thank God for Doctor Drew. You know not Doctor Adam. I don't see a doctor in front of your name, Mister Big Mouth. <laughs> yeah. David Allen Greer tomorrow night, everybody. <laughs> All right, Ian, go ahead. Um, okay, anyhow, here's what happened. Um, I was, I, I, I went over to my friend's house expecting that he would be there, um, and he wasn't. His mom, uh, his mom told me that you know I could wait upstairs uh, for him to come back, and she came in the room with me, and she just pretty much started to. Uh, g give me oral sex. Oh. Um, and then it just, what, and she put me on the bed. What room were you in? Uh, pardon? What room were you guys in? I was in his room. His room. Mm -hmm. Um. And th then, then um, then she put me on the bed, and she pretty much just oral. Huh? She went the whole yeah. way, and I I was trying to get up. Yeah. I, I, this was weird. Um. And 
I want to go tell the authorities or something. Get sure, it. sure, yeah. But the problem it's is, rape. your guess right. is rape. That's what it is. It, it, you were it, violated. Um, the violated. Is his, uh, um, my friend, my best friend's um, father is in jail for murder. Uh, one, no, uh, armed robbery. Um, <clears throat> and so if, if I, you know, got her in trouble, he's already a, a pretty messed up. But I, I don't want to do that to him. What was she wearing? Um, she had a bathrobe on. When did this happen? Um, it was b about a, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, about. What mm -hmm. color was the bathrobe? What, co what color was the bathrobe? And what was she wearing underneath? Mm -hmm. Uh, she was wearing, um, a... a uh, damn! Yeah. Qualified? No, sh shut up. Oh, oh. Okay. No, she was wearing a black lace bra, um, and matching, uh, panties. And what color was the bathrobe? Bathroom was white. And what time of day was this? It was about four o'clock. Uh huh. She was just hanging hanging out in her back black lace panties at four in the afternoon. Well, you know when you're. <coughs> what was I, the address? I do it all the time. The address was right. old man's no, in the I, joint. I, I don't know you know. Before and she just been like in a bathroom to answer the door or, so, or something, and that that was like totally, you know. I, no. I, I didn't think she was going to try and pull crap on me. How old are you again? Fifteen. What? Uh, so why did why didn't why did you go up there if you didn't want to do it? Because, no, I went up to his room to wait. Wait for him. I didn't know she was going to come up there and do that. Right. And you're, you're angry? I'm angry at her, and, but I, I don't want to... Um... You're gay. True, true please. <laughs> Screw you, Drew. Yeah, Drew. You shouldn't even be on the show so we can get exactly. some ratings. <laughs> get exactly. Some, get rid of Drew. Get some real ratings. Damn straight. For change. Hi, uh, Ian? Mm-hmm. Uh, hold on a second. I, I, I want to talk to the, uh, the boys from... Uh, Hooba Stang and uh, Doctor <clears throat> Doctor Who. You should be moving on. Doctor right? Who. Doctor Who. Yeah. Oh, um, right. I'm already left. Listen, this guy. I hate this kid. By the way, even though he does mm. have a very valid point with getting rid of Drew, <laughs> he's such a prick. This little guy. On the other hand, that's the kind of prick that would get himself uh, involved in something like this. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing worse than like fresh mouth punks. You know, <sighs> I just want to clobber them. I don't know what that <laughs> is, Jeez. but but the the but I kind of believe him. He's pretty brazen. Yeah, I got like a, I get a, a story I'm, up. I'm walking that line whether I go wow or no way. He's kind of he's like, let let me tell you the number one bogus call on this show is, this is I one. got it on yeah. with my mom, my yeah. friend's mom. Mm. That's that's number one in the bogus apartment. Although. If she's really chaotic and screwed up and his old man is in jail, she could be just whacked out enough. I mean, she could just be home on disability, drinking Robitussin all day, <laughs> just all effed up out of her mind. Right. And, uh... Fifteen? And this would be the kind of prick that would, uh... Yeah. But on the other out. hand, then, uh, since... since I, I know he's fifteen, but he sounds like a Vietnam vet. <laughs> and what's so bad about a BJ? And it's been two Every weeks. Every kid dreams about this. I know. It's... it's I, I mean... Like, I'm, I'm, a little per, I'm a little perplexed. Well, let's just treat it as if it uh, is. Um, Ian? Yeah. All right. So you, you want to call the cops on her? Is that what no, you want to no. do? Well, uh, okay. First stuff would be telling my parents. What? Telling your parents. Yes, telling my parents. All right. That's fine. All right. I'll go for um, that. And then seeing what they wanted to go. All right. And Adam, after all the praise I, I, I gave you for you, you turn around and stab the knife in my back. That was so not cool. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. That was, that was uh, putting a knife in your back. Hey, All right, Ian. Prick. Right. Listen, Thank no, you. no. Listen, I, I still, I still appreciate what you said about getting rid of Drew. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make some phone calls after the show and see what we can do. All right. All right. Tell your, okay, do it. Tell your parents, and and they are the adults, and let them be your guide. It sounds like you have good enough, a good enough family. Yeah, someone, how could he have a good enough family? A. W why? How what's could this wrong? Have that? Oh, <laughs> true. <laughs> you know, true. He, he loves you even more. True. This now, boy Drew. was traumatized. But you know what I'm saying? How could he have a good enough family? And number two, what 15 year old on earth has the ability to talk about something like that with their with their parents? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I would have done so, it. So no. it's just it's totally bogus. It doesn't fit. Okay. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. But so let's say go to a teacher or somebody at school you trust. There okay, you bogus, but talk to someone about yeah. it anyway. Well, <laughs> if you're the kind of person that gets that's like Ian. Don't go to your parents. Okay. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, <laughs> That's all we need from you, Jill. Dan and Doug uh, here. The McKenzie brothers. No, wait. What were those McKenzie brothers' names? Mm. 
Bob and Doug. Sorry. Oh, Drew, you know nothing. nothing. Uh, you're not even on the show as of tonight. <laughs> as of tomorrow, anyway. <laughs> Hoover Stank, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Billy Duffy. And Ian Asprey from the Cult, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's not, oh, yeah. You already heard that part. <laughs> Hoover Stank is our guest tonight. Who? Who? Hoover Stank. They, uh, oh, that's the name of the uh, CD as well. I got some uh, tour dates uh, for oh, you, them. Did you know that the CD came out today? Did anybody tell you? Today, that? Yeah. yeah. It's a release date. Well, I figured it was out. Hip, hip, hooray. It is out. It came out today. San Francisco on the 2nd of December, Vegas on the 7th, Tempe, Arizona on the 8th, Colorado Springs 10th, Denver on the 11th. My God. Chicago on the 12th. This is all December dates. Right. Cincinnati 13th, Cleveland 14th, uh, Detroit 17th, Houston 21st, Dallas 22nd. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus. That's I mean, too much. Guys, is this all on a bus? Yes. Oh. A Volkswagen bus. The bus is crazy. Portland <laughs> on November 30th, Seattle the 29th. That's all next week. <laughs> or you can just go to the website and check all that Do out. You, wait, yeah. Wait. yeah, give that. <clears throat> it's hoobastank.com. H-O-O-B-A-S-T-A-N-K. All right, so you can find out all the uh, tour dates and when they're coming to a town San near Jose you. on the 5th. True that. All right. <sighs> you're right, Yeah, yeah. I just, I just had a... Uh, since I'm leaving the show tonight, I just feel obliged to bring this up. I yeah, uh, yeah. you'll be leaving, I think, after the next <laughs> break. Yeah, before I go, I, we just had this huge um, laugh on your behalf, on your, at your expense, actually. Oh, all right. The ladies were uh, mentioning that the other night when you bent over to pick up something on the... On the uh, you were picking up something here on the floor a couple nights ago. Yeah. That your... Um, what? Your ass hair impressed the hell out of them. Thank you. They, they Dan, your ass hair impresses the hell out of they me. They were very moved. Thank so you. I, so Thank so you. I thought I'd bring that up before I go. All right. Hey, Drew, you're just getting... It's, 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 the, it's the parting shots of a dying man, everybody. <laughs> Get it all out, buddy. And and this mug ain't going. That's that's, part, right. that's Westwood One property. No, so just, you have I, to I, leave I the just mug... Want, just put my shots before I go. ...in the chair. All right. Amy? Yeah. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Um, I was calling to ask Dr. Drew a question. Um, me and my husband are trying to conceive with our second child, and I was just wondering, I have that little wheel that I stole from the doctor's office, you know, when to conceive and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, um, is there a certain time of the day to best to conceive? Not that I'm aware of. There's certainly a day that's the best, but I don't know there's a certain time during that day. Well, shouldn't you take your basal temperature? Yeah, it's within 24 hours of ovulation. Uh, yeah. Well, what does what your temperature go up? Does it, the, the, where's that thermometer go? In the I vagina? I take no temperature. Shush up. Well, why aren't you doing the temperature monitoring? Because I didn't need that with my first child. Why would I need it with my second? Well, didn't you just say you took a timing wheel? No, it's, it's just, yeah, it's a little wheel. All right. Well, if you're into the timing... One of the ways to sort of refine that timing is a basal body temperature monitor. There are kits you can get in the pharmacy that help you do that. There is a definite 24-hour window that is optimal for, for conception. Now, you, how many days do you ovulate? Because on that wheel, it just says that the conception it has only one day. That, I thought it was four days when you ovulate. No. There's three days that the sperm can hang out waiting for that egg. Uh -huh. Sperm will stay in the tube for three days. But there is 24 hours during which ovulation occurs. Okay. And how soon... Can I find out? See, because I knew I was pregnant with... Well, what do you want Drew to do? Come over there and bang you, too? Heck no. All right. Well, l listen, go get that Go get that kit. You go get the kit, you'll figure it all out. Why do you want to get pregnant? You're 21. You already got a kid. Because I'm only having two kids, and I want to get them done and over with while I'm young, so I can still have some when I get older. That's a good way to do it. Just, yeah, well, you can still just chain them to the radiator and go out and drink. I mean, you're 40, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do it now. They aren't going anywhere. No, my mom did that to me. I don't think it's going to oh, work. Shocked. Hey, uh, hey, Amy. Yeah. I bet you would make a better mom at 28 than you would at 21. I'm a perfect mom now. You, no. You sound pissed off uh, yeah. for, to be a perfect mom. <laughs> yeah. Amy, n no one is not better at 28 than yeah. 21. What's your mom do to you? Um, you know, my mom had four kids by 21, had her fifth at 25. So you're going to try to outdo that? No, heck no, I'm only having two. So then what? So what'd she do? What was wrong with well, I left. Well, I left my mom's house when I was 13, so. Why? Oh God. Well, I ended up in the system. Why? Because I decided to steal my grandma's car. What was she doing to you to make you so disturbed? My stepdad was. What stepdad, was doing, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. What was he doing? He just beat me a lot when All he right. got bored. 
Okay. So I would run away a lot and... You know, right. she'd call the cops and <clears throat> be back and run You've away. You've got to be careful. You're going to have a tendency to want to uh, physicalize your feelings towards your children, too. Uh, yeah, I yeah. don't I don't hit my son, and that's for the reason. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But you, as he gets older and whoever the next child is, you're gonna when you get overwhelmed, that's the direction you're going to go. What about, the, uh, what about your boyfriend? My husband? Husband, yeah, husband. Is what about a, him? Is he an addict? Or How's he, he doing? No, he actually, he's very good. He's a stockbroker. All right. Very good guy. All right there, baby. Good time. I have another question for Dr. Yeah. Drew. Yeah. I've seen you on um, Women Are From Venus, Men Are From mm-hmm. Mars. Mm-hmm. And I've seen them when they gave you um, those G-strings. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. <laughs> you don't remember getting a G string? It sounds good. I, uh, I, I must have. I, must have I seen that G string up I, I your ass. I must have put that out of my mind. It yeah. was a tiger stripe G string they gave you. And did I wear it? I was wondering if you wore it. You didn't no. put it on there. No, I, I don't. Didn't wear that. No. Uh, no. That's not my thing. And, and listen, the, that whole thong back thing for guys is a would be a disaster, potential disaster. Mm. Yeah, it would not work right. I would not like to see that. No, I, not only that, but the thing would be ruined. Ruined. <laughs> Why okay. would it be ruined? I, I, I can't get in, in real real detail about it, but okay. it would just... Stuff goes in my ass once, and that's it. There's no <laughs> there's no second pass. It you understand? It doesn't, doesn't emerge. It doesn't come back out again. That's it. It's like the devil's triangle. Mm-hmm. Uh, boats, planes, they go in. They don't come out. In your ass? Yeah, in my ass, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Mm. All right, well, Amy's going to be a great mother. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, my stepdad had beat me pretty good, but uh, don't worry. I'm going to make it all right with my kiddies. Knock a few of them out real quick. Then I can go out and have myself a good time and only be in my late 30s. <laughs> There's a plan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. She worked that all out. Michael? Oh, hi. Hey, you're 12. What's up? You, you, you're so young. Hi. Yeah, just a middle school kid. All right. What yeah. grade are you in? Uh, seventh. Seventh grade. Wow. Yeah, um, I'm just like sort of scared, like you know. But uh, I told this one girl I liked her after I sat next to her for a while, and we used to talk all the time. It's like how I'm talking with my best friend, cause like I'm mm-hmm. at his house right now, mm-hmm. and like it was so easy. But then after I told her I liked her, it's like it's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, it's just like is it weird because you're thinking it's weird, or did she get kind of weird on you? Yeah, she, well, it was sort of both ways. Like, I got sort of scared around her, and she got sort of scared around me. And Does she like you? I don't know. I have really no clue, because one of my friends, uh, Kristen, is also her friend, like, talked to her for me, and she said that she said she just liked me as a friend. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, we'll there you go. <laughs> this is the beginning of a long, long life, Michael. Yeah. Very long. Yeah. We're going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to give you a makeover on your 13th birthday because because th- this friend thing. That, now, here's the deal. That's fine that she likes you. It's just a friend. But uh, you move on now. Yeah, it's better than not yeah. liking you at all. Yeah, nah, that's what I think. No, it's not actually. No, it's no actually it's, it's quite a bit worse. I don't know, man. You can plant that seed for later on, you know, maybe a few years down the, down the road. No, no you're, you, hold on. <laughs> hold on. You are sending a very dangerous message right now. <laughs> you're giving this boy hope when he deserves none. Forget about it, man. There you go. Yeah, like, you're ugly. I know that chances <laughs> are, like, extremely slim. Yeah, they are. That's uh, all right, but you, you, can, you can find another girl. I like her more than I've ever liked anyone, though. Like, I like this one girl. Yeah, well, but, yeah listen, the, you're, the, you're great joy, the great joy in all this. This won't be the last time you'll go through this. Mm. Right. I, this I think, is just I, the beginning. I think he should find the... Uh, the ugliest girl in his class and go for her because, because about she will th- be hot. She's going to be hot in about four years. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's an interesting. That's an interesting. She's going to be the hottest girl in high school. No, the promise will be like six years. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two yeah. years out, out, of high out of high school. Two years yeah. out of high school. So in, in 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 a couple of years, find the ugliest girl. Yeah, but class. let me let me tell you, I I had that happen. I had a, a really ugly girlfriend in the seventh grade <laughs> who turned out to be uh, really hot, like in the tenth and eleventh grade, but she just dumped me. You, you well, see what I mean? It's not to, like I should have had her sign something. Yeah. <laughs> it, you see, that's what happens. They get hot and they dump you. It's not like, oh, geez, I, I got to stay with this guy until college. But at least you can say, hey, I went out with that girl. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got a lot of mileage out of that. I'm still actually <laughs> throwing that around. <laughs> All right. Huba Stank is our guest tonight. We will uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll uh, talk to uh, Josh, who's totally in love with his ex-girlfriend. He wants to know how he can get her back. Ooh. 
This ain't going to be pretty after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Drew. Kuba Stank is our guest tonight. Still here. Dan and Doug both here from the band. Shalom. Kuba Stank's also the name of the uh, CD. Out today, and we'll hear something else off it in the 11 o'clock hour. When we left off, we were talking about talking to Josh, who's 16. Josh? Yeah, hey, what's up? So you're totally in love with your ex. Yeah. All right, a few questions. How long were you with her? Uh, we were going out for like a month, month and a half. Oh, boy. Oh, That's yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Not, not how long are you away from her? I don't know how you can call that an ex. How well, it's 16. And you're 16 old month. Did yeah. you have sex with her? No. No. How long are you away from her? Uh, we've been it's separated been for like a week. Four years. Separated. Two weeks. <laughs> Separate. Trial separation, a therapist suggested it? <laughs> okay. I wish. All right, what base did you get to with her? Uh, come on, guys. This is public radio. What what, what base, seriously? Uh, seriously, um, you know, I haven't really gotten to any of the bases. I haven't even... <laughs> 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 right. Oh, suck. All right, so nothing... nothing. No, no first base. little kissing, maybe? Uh, yeah. Just a kissing. Passionate kissing? Mm, pretty good, I guess. But mm. no, no tongue? Uh, a little. Uh, little, a little. Hold, hold on a second. Oh. What's wrong with oh. <laughs> what? it? What? Maybe we, what's going maybe on, we had No girlfriend. That's not a girlfriend. Maybe we had to talk to her and get her view of the situation. He doesn't... Well, you can't, he, she, she wouldn't know who we were talking about. <laughs> That's the point. Ooh. How do you break this to him, Adam? Well, he needs to hear it. Guys, do this. Oh, <laughs> There's nothing we love more than crushing some youngsters' dreams. Here we go. That's why, <laughs> that's why we're in business. Hey, uh, Josh... Okay, bring it to me. All right, I, 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 she, I don't think she was your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She yeah. was your infatuation. You were into her, and she may have been into you to some degree. But I wouldn't say you guys. There was nothing to really break up. Exactly. Uh -huh. Why? Why are you apart from her a week? Uh, she just doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Okay, well, tell us how that went. Yeah, down. how did that happen? Uh. Some guys in my school, you know, they uh, they were trying to get a peek up her skirt, so you know, I dealt with them, and you know, it kind of went downhill from there. You mean you beat up some guys? Mm. He cramped himself and then flung it at them. I did that once. <laughs> <laughs> that impresses women. Well, I didn't really kick their ass, you know. I just told them to back the hell away from her, and you know, she was kind of uncomfortable with that. So, how many dates did you go on with her? Uh, two. Two dates. Two or three. Two and, dates. And you're in love? Let's leave it Man, at two. Man, that is two. serious. Two, two uh, dates. Let's leave it at two. Were these guys just kind of talking to her? Uh, Were these friends of hers, maybe, that she was kind of hanging out with? No, I know these dudes. Uh, yeah, but how does she, how does she think, feel about them? Uh, who who yeah. are they to her? Uh, Boyfriend and brother. No, no, none of that. She just moved here, so, you know. Well, here, here's what I guess we're trying to, we're trying to decipher. If, if, in fact, these guys sort of posed a threat to her and you stepped in and laid down the law in a sort of chivalrous way, why would that would make her closer to you or, or yeah, why more impressed? Why did she say, get why, away from me, I'm freaked out? Why did that freak her out? I have no clue. All right, maybe these are guys she wanted to talk to. And then when she broke up with me, she didn't give me a reason. Well, we, you didn't have to. You guys yeah. weren't going out. <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't going out. I remember man. when Claudia Schiffer dumped me, not a word that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> took off. You weren't, <laughs> you weren't going out. I know what you mean. And she, you disrupted some conversation she was having with a couple of guys. Right? Uh, no, actually, these dudes were trying to look up her skirt. So, uh, Okay. What does that mean? I don't know. Hey, uh, was she wearing the skirt? Uh, yeah. Okay, you understand it's important to get the details. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Well, it's going to be hard for you to sort of... You know what it's like? It's like you wanting to get a uh, car out of the, the impound yard, except for it's not your car. You, you see, you want something back that you don't have the pink slip to. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's going to make it difficult. If, if you told us you dated her for it's nine months and you guys were you know hot and heavy and then something happened that blew up the relationship we'd give you advice but there's doesn't seem to be enough here to build advice on two uh, dates two dates and uh, actually he's counting to the movie and back as twice yeah. too <laughs> did Once. she at any point ever say that you guys were going out together uh yeah she did so what did how she did say? she say that uh, 
What did mm-hmm. she say? How did she st- how did she tell that to you that you guys were going out? Well, uh, you know. And Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and then she said, "Okay, therefore we're going out." Like you want to go out to the movies or that no, kind of thing? I, I, I put on? him on hold cuz he used the <laughs> F word. You know what it's uh it's it's night of the uh, angry teen. Yeah. Mm. And and actually here's what it is uh, to be quite honest. I think we're we're calling people out on stuff that they're not really wanting to talk we're about. We're exploring wanting... things that maybe they don't exactly want to yeah. explore yeah. and yeah. and it's it's creating a little first there's a little confusion and then comes resentment. Then the hostility. A little hostility. Yeah. Josh I I think you need to move on. And I think you well, need to keep your eyes open. I'm concerned about his relationship with reality, frankly. Is that that bitch's name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this reality? I mean, he needs to really uh, start, you know, taking a look at his role in all of this. Uh, yeah, don't. What's uh, going on? Uh, here. Here, here's what I'm saying, Josh. And uh, we we're screwing around with you a little bit, and we put you on hold because you use the f word, but. Focus on reality. We weren't screwing around. We were just trying to well, figure out what the reality I, I, was. I know, I know. But it, it, we, we're having a little fun at his expense. But here's the deal, Josh. Um, I don't want to see you slip into some dark, lonely, weird place. You, you, you know what I mean? And I, I kind of get the vibe that he could go there. I, I want to talk to him a little bit. Oh, go, go talk to him yeah, off talk. the air. This is your last night. Maybe go over to his house. Yeah. All right. All right. You, you talk to Josh off the air. Go talk to him now. Mm. All right, we got a question for uh, Hoobastank. Hey, Eugene. Hey, you fifteen? Yeah, I am. What's um, up, Adam? I love you, Drew. I, well, Drew is gone. Drew's out of here. I mean, for good. Oh. <laughs> Lock the door. Yeah, I don't miss him. Good, me neither. <laughs> All right, um, Doug, Dan, uh, I'm a huge Hoobastank fan. You know, oh, thanks, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, ever since uh, before the U became an A. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, this guy's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I actually have. Um, they don't make basketball shorts like they used to. So how'd you find that? Um, well, I, I don't have like a, you know I have a copy. So. Oh, okay, goody goody. Yeah, um, and yeah, I know a couple guys who got counselored, and I met you guys a couple times, but that was back when you weren't so big. <laughs> but um, <laughs> do we grow in size physically? <laughs> oh no, well, you know, on the radio and such. But right, um, right. I was wondering if you know after this album comes out and the label, you know gets a little more confidence in you if you guys are going to get Jeremy back. Jeremy who? You know, the saxophone player. Uh, right. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Screw Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked that kid. <laughs> hey, Eugene? Yeah. No, Jeremy. No. Oh, all right. Hey, Eugene, are you coming to the show tomorrow? Yes, I am. All right. Good, we'll see you there. Hey, you, there. Y- you know what? We go on at 9 o'clock, so you get there early, okay? Oh, I will. All right, Eugene? Mm-hmm. He's a uh, fellow uh, Agorian. Really? That's where he's from. Yeah, Gore Hill says it. Uh, says it right. Never on heard there. of it. Right on the <laughs> screen. Gore, <there>. what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Huba Stank is our uh, guest tonight. We're going to take a little break. Drew's on the uh, line with uh, Josh over there, and we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Line, fastest growing outlaw radio in Southern California. I, I changed it up a little. I didn't say North America there, right? Good. Should have, should have went with North America, though. Chris has uh, replaced uh, Dan from uh, Hoobastang. Woo-hoo. We're alive. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> the boo to you. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, is that a Simpsons thing? Yeah. yeah no, you Simpsons. know what? It you got to boo everything. It's yeah. a, that's an old time. It didn't start yeah. with The Simpsons. No, where did it, it started start? with Homegrown. Oh, <laughs> that's right. We used to go to our, our friends' band shows and, and heckle them. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. from the back, so they couldn't Just see it was the back. like boo! as soon as as soon as it got quiet, you know, boo, you know, <laughs> and we, we carried on. Every band I go see gets the boo. It's not even for bands anymore. It's for every little yeah. thing you dislike at all. If the waitress doesn't bring your you just coffee, boo. boo. And you yeah. know what? The so. better the band, the bigger the boo. Oh, that's good alliteration, too. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Hoobastank CD. Uh, oh, no, we're not going to boo that. That is uh, cur- for you. Sorry, currently out. Out today. We will uh, hear something. There you go. Yeah, there we go. We'll uh, hear something else uh, off of that in just a uh, couple of few. But uh, now it's time to uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Jessica, who's 17. Jessica? Hi. Hey. How's it going? Hmm. 
Boo. Um, boo. Boo. <laughs> That's my hey. line, guys. It's good. It's all good. What's up? Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yep. Um, <laughs> okay, hello. Um, all right. I my right boob is significantly larger than my left. Yay! Boo. I mean, uh, well, <laughs> all right, what size is your right? Uh, my right. Well, both of them are roughly double D's. The other one, I probably bigger than a double D because it's practically bursting out of the cup. Mm. Bouncy, bouncy. Now, now you're really speaking my language. <laughs> okay. What uh, what size is the rest of you? Well, the left one is. No, double I'm, I'm talking about the ass. My ass? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, because it's important medically. Oh, um, no, yeah. well, I'm a size eight. All right. So is, you're size fat. Size, like size six or eight. Six or eight. That's medium, right? Small. Yeah. No, it's not small. Eight is not small. Eight is sample size. Eight is not. Right? Well, Jessica? Well, I think that my size is normal. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's average. It's, average. it's not, it's not it's, petite. It's sample size. It's not no, yeah. four uh, and six are small. Eight is medium. And also just my <laughs> well, sample I have size. Hold another on. Yeah, what is this? issue. I don't know. Well, um, hold on. How tall are you? I'm about 5'4". All right. How much do you weigh? 140. All right. Yeah, that's sample size, Drew. That, that's that's uh, Chub Pack. Are you kidding me? Sample Pardon? Size. All right, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. It, it, it's all right. Go ahead, Jessica. So uh, one is bigger. Yeah, and also my nipples are fairly light. I mean, like my mom, my sister, theirs are fairly dark, and I thought that mine would be dark as well. Uh huh. But they're not. They're kind of like light pink, almost fleshed color. Well, oh, big areola. Um, not huge, but not small. All right. Medium. Yeah. Okay. I thought, like, maybe when I, probably when I was, when I started puberty, probably about nine or ten, and, you know, I started growing, I'm thinking, oh, you know, they'll probably look my, like my mom's or my sister's, but, you know, they don't look anything like it. Are, are your, is, how old's your sister? She's 21. Oh, she big, too? Um, big no, chest? not as big as me. I'm yeah. fairly large. Through her. And, <laughs> and is she darker skin? Because sometimes women who are, like, just sort of darker skin have the darker nipples, you know? She pretty much has the same skin tone as me, maybe a little bit yellower, but otherwise the same color. I see. What's your nationality? Really, what's the question Yeah, what's here? the question here? <laughs> I don't know. I, we're talking I, about I, I boobs, got a, but... I got a great really? picture of what she looks like, but I have no idea where this is going. Oh, well, I'm, ca oh, I'm ca Caucasian. I'm a Adam is just collecting uh, <laughs> data for tonight. <laughs> <I'm just kinda laughs> he really is. I got a date with myself later on. Yeah. Okay, right. now, Jessica, your question. Um, will I ever... Will the other one catch up to the right one? Not necessarily. Unless you take the pill on one side. No, it's real, 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 very common for there to be some, some right. asymmetry, directionality, size, something. Not uncommon at all. Is there anything, like, wrong or is it normal? No, it's, it's normal. Really? Yeah. Do you, can you, you be all right? You mean use one uh, double D bra and you're fine? Well, I probably have to go to some, I know a special bra place that can get different sizes done, but it's just, it's kind of, it looks weird. I mean, to me it looks weird. My friends say that it's not noticeable, but, like, it feels noticeable. I can feel the difference. Yeah. We, we get this all the time. And, uh, you know, as a guy, have you ever noticed it on a woman, guys? Yes. I mean, yes. Oh, really? <laughs> well, let's put it this Sorry, way. You got it, a big has problem. it ever troubled it, it you? It has never, never. Has it been an issue? Oh, come on. Boobs no way. Boobs. Yeah, boobs you can't complain about. Right yeah. Right. Yeah, it, you know, the, the, it, it's, it's strange because we, they don't need to be the same. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's no just way. like it's like dating two women. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. A variety never. Heard. I never well, thought about symmetry that in way. terms of how right. how people perceive beauty, symmetry does figure in. But okay. there is an area where it's not a big deal. Be better, better it be your boob than your eyes or a nostril. But how about my saying. nipples though? Will they get any darker? What do you need I, darker nipples? It doesn't for? matter. Well, doesn't I mean, matter. It, just, it looks kind of weird. Shouldn't they be a little bit darker? Uh, the, the, listen, you women get so caught up in the nipples, uh, in the nipples especially. To, to, to guys, that's just yeah. I mean, who, that's just who's going to see these boobs anyways? Like, who's it for? You or for the yeah. guy that you want to show it to? The, what are you worried about? Well, you know, I mean, like if I went ever with a guy, I don't want him to just if run guy, away. Or if, you, if trust me, the guy will be so stoked by yeah, that time, it's not going to matter. He will. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> and his uh, balls will be ugly as hell. So I yeah. know. You, you yeah. always make fun of them if he goes after your nipples. Definitely. It's too All right, right, Jessica, mm -hmm. you're, you're fine. Okay. You guys guys really don't, we just don't care that much. Here, here's the deal with nipples and boobs. They come in a million different shapes, colors, and sizes, and w that's what we like about it. they're them. all good. It's all good. All right? All right, thank you. All right. They're all our children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
Except for the right one, which is a little bit smaller. I look at that as like kind of a bad stepchild. <laughs> the red-headed stepchild? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Drew. Eight, that sample size. Well, eight, Jonathan, eight is. is it Drew, sorry, how, and, and how, 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 much, me how often can eight, you be wrong? Is eight sample size? How often can and, you be wrong? What is Thank sample you. size? Yeah, Thank can, you. We, can we clarify like, like the stuff you see out there that when they sell samples, they'd be size eight. That's what, what something they put out on display. Like on the mannequins? No. no. Yeah. Those yes. mannequins no. are animals. No, those mannequins aren't eight. And help me. No. And God bless. No. Vatikans. Yeah, they want to sell clothes, you know? Eight is average. Eight is sample size. Okay, listen. Listen to me. I, I drew. Why do you always argue with me when I'm always, always? I'm right? not saying she. I know is nothing saying. about nothing. I can tell you if we go to the mall and I start pulling those those sundresses off of the waif mannequins that are in the window, they will not be eights. That's what Anne? I can tell you. Well, don't well, ask well, Anne because Anne's an eight and she wants the world to be an eight. That's what that that's what you're doing. Is that true? <laughs> of course. <gasps> It's it's the most average size. It's eight, what they say. You, when, when, it is the most average but, but size. When they it say, is not petite. It's the average size. But when they say there's a sample sale, they're going to be eights. She's going to find right? your coffee for that one. <laughs> no, l- listen. The the average that is the average yeah. size. I'll not argue with that. Yeah, that's but, all. But the, the, the petite is not average. All I know is when they have said sale samples. You know. Hey, okay. Here. Sales. Okay. Let's say Jack Hall. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. If you're talking to a chick on the internet. This is for our, our yeah. listeners. Okay. And, Hypothetically, right? And she says, I'm a size 8. Do not expect a petite woman. Agreed. I- expect a average, average size woman, Agreed. but not a petite totally woman. Totally. Can I make a point? Thank you, Jack. If you're talking to a girl on the internet... Don't expect anything. She says she's a size no. 8. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> Just put a 2 in front <laughs> yeah. of that 8. <laughs> you want to see pictures before, <laughs> right. that, before you make any Chris, judgments on that. very valid. Very valid. I don't know how I know that. Chris, you sound so experienced <laughs> at this. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Jonathan... You know, I think yeah, yeah, no, here. I'm sorry for cutting you off, Chris. That was a, a genius point. Jonathan, you're 19. Yeah, I had two questions. Actually, a little bit more than two for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine started doing ecstasy and coke for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, she's been doing coke for about four, four and a half months. And it's not like, it's not every day. It's probably like, like once a week, maybe once or twice every two weeks, something like that. And I want to know about long-term and short-term effects of Coke and both ecstasy. Well, they don't have some special additive problem associated with them. They each individually have their own problem. And cocaine, people usually, when they're addicted to cocaine, will do it in these two- to four-day binges. Does she smoke cocaine or snort it? Snort. Yeah. She may, she may still sort of be in the early stages of cocaine addiction. Does she have an alcoholic history or family uh, no, She has an um, addictive personality. Well, so she becomes addictive really easily. So she has been addicted to other things. Well, uh, two years ago she was uh, drinking. All right. All right, all right, all right. She was able to drink a lot, but she stopped that. All right. So how old is she? Uh, right now, I believe eighteen. All right. So she's sort of getting going in her addictive disease. Do you like her? Uh, no, we dated for about two years, and uh, we're not going out anymore. But uh, I still care about her, and I don't want to see her. Uh, do you have an alcohol? Do you have an alcoholic parent? No, uh, I actually have. One alcoholic parent, yes. Yeah, shocking. Yeah. yeah. Well, See, that gets sassy. Drew. No, I'm He's just trying, I'm, to, trying I, to I'm help. just saying that's why you need a project like her. That's why you're so at- attracted and so intent on fixing her is that's who you are, is you're someone who's in relations with alcoholics. No, I drink alcohol. That's how you define yourself. And to, be if honest, you, to be honest with you, um, she was not an alcoholic. She just didn't know what to do, and it was a weekend thing. She and was born an alcoholic. And okay. she may she may just be getting on in her disease here. But she's a, make no mistake about it. She's an alcoholic addict. If you want to change, well, hold on, Drew. Drew says alcoholic. He means that that includes coke and whatever else. Yeah, I mean, alcoholic addict. It's all the same. It's all a genetic disorder, and, and it gets going based. All on right. So what chemical. should he do? She, the ecstasy is the bigger problem. Okay, in terms of long term brain issues, it, there's ample evidence that it causes destruction of brain chemistry. Brain cells that do not come back. And the destruction part of, the, of brain cells? Destruction of brain cells and the serotonin centers of the limbic system so people get depressed and have panic and anxiety. It's memory problems. It's been well documented. The cocaine, it, it's more part of her addictive disease. It's a very addictive drug. It causes a lot of mood lability and irritability, this sort of thing. But that, that is more part of the evolution of another deadly process, which is addiction. Okay, so hmm. what's he going to do? Go to Al-Anon. He goes to Alan. He goes to Alan. Where does That's she where I was go? going before you interrupted well, me. Well, get there, you idiot. He's been on hold for five. He's been talking for five minutes, Mr. Uh, oh, oh, eight is average. Wait, 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 wait. Here, let's talk about eight is average here. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Kate knows mannequins. Kate? 
Yes. You know mannequins? I know mannequins, and eight is not average. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Um, well, yeah. It's, what is average? Um, I on would the mannequins in the stores, we four, usually dress them in a two or maybe a four Ooh. if the butt's big. Ooh. And yeah. then um, if you go to a sample sale like in downtown LA or at Fashion Institute, they'll be selling anywhere between a two and a zero. Two and a... Hold on. Who cares? Two and a zero? Yeah. Why would they sell such small sizes on the uh, sample size? Their models are very small. I don't know. They just do. All right. All right. So what you're saying now, is, is I'm, I'm right what again. Wait, why do you know all this? I know. This, I work for Abercrombie and Fitch for the visuals department. All okay. right. So you're saying Drew is wrong. Yes, I am. Wrong. Wrong. Sorry. Wrong. Thanks, baby. No this is his last night. Eight. No, wait, let's go back to the... It's, it's really not looking good, Drew. It is eight. That's right. <laughs> Your comeback isn't looking good. You right. know what I love? Drew's the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> is eight average? Screw um, you, Drew. I don't know. I'm at college. I wouldn't think so. No, look. Here's the deal. Eight is average... But most, okay, here's the reality. Most women would like to lose 10 pounds, uh -huh. okay? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And those women wear an 8 for the most mm. part. Mm. So 8 is average, but th wanting to lose 10 pounds is not petite. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh right, right, right. I'm not saying it's wrong if anyone wears an 8, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's wrong when uh, someone is, you know, considered average. Now, but it's wh not why, what you would consider petite. Why do Ann and I think the 8 is sample size? Where do, you, where do you get that impression? No, from? she said eight is average. That's what she said. And sample size, we also said. Well, you said yeah. that. Well, she was agreeing with you. That's all. She all just right. likes you better. That's all. all right. Kate? Yes. Thanks, baby. Bye. Hey. Hey. He wants yeah. a deal. So yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. like a guy saying six inches is average? Yeah. Like kind there of you go. No, making that, up. That's you know, like, like a guy saying four. It's it's as if okay. it's like if Drew said four is the average size penis, and I went, that is right. Because six, is, cause six exactly is average. Right. <laughs> Right. right. Six is average. And, yeah. Right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. Yeah, that's what, <clears throat> what I said. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyways, next, next Six question. is actually a little on the high side. Of yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought. I thought six was yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, six is, is grotesque. Ooh, yeah. Hey, yeah. join the circus. That's buddy. it. Uh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Kelly? Yeah? You're 17? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, okay, I was in a relationship with a guy, and he, um... He's quite a bit older than me. And it was when I was 14, and I didn't realize it at the time, but he was molesting me. And wait, he wait. Was, well, you were 14, he was how old? He was, he told me mm. that he was 29. Like, mm. everybody everybody <laughs> thought he was 29. Yeah. All right, so that would have been, that been fine, but yeah. as it turns no, out. No, no, I'm not saying it would have been fine, but oh. my point is that he also lied about his age. But um, What if he were 19? Wouldn't that still be molesting? Um, yeah, but that's not her point. What? Is, what? How old was he? In reality, um, let's see. Right now, he he was born. Let's see. Right now, he's thirty-two, and he that would have made him twenty-nine. No, actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right now, he's um thirty-nine. Okay. Wait. So he, he was, was thirty-six. 36. Yeah. yeah. So he was thirty-six, and you were fourteen. Yeah. What a delightful gent. What a I, great I, guy. I would like to have hung, hung, hung with this cat. Sounds like a dynamite individual. And where did you meet him? Um, Web. Actually, he, he taught me how to, he taught me swing dancing lessons. What kind of dancing? Swing dancing. So swing swing dancing. dancing. Oh, so he was a, an, an, an instructor. Those dance yeah. instructors will get you every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you dated him for how long? I didn't really like date him. We had like a relationship where he played mind games with me and and like manipulated me. I don't know. I just thought I was in love with him. And he knew you were fourteen. Yeah. And just for kicks, what what grade were you in when you were doing this with this um, dancer? Uh, a sophomore. Sophomore. No, you were. You Hold were, on. You were, but just tell us what grade you were. You're either in. eighth or ninth. What yeah. grade were you in? When I was fourteen, I was in um, eleventh. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> what is wrong with everybody? First off, oh, it's not like you're 67 and I woke you up. But you're 17, baby. <laughs> this was a, this was a scant three years ago. You know what I mean? It's like when she's got to be a junior now. I, I'm saying she like guessed the year. She guessed the year she was in. I mean, like how? Did, what what goes on with this show? Boo. That's what. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, listen, baby. What, Hello? what grade are you in now? Sorry, I, I said, I'm really nervous. Okay, okay uh, what what grade are you in now? I'm a senior. Grade, just uh, the 12th grade, right? 12th grade, okay. 12th and it was grade 10th now. grade when I, when I was 14. 
How, how could can, that be? Must be a smart girl. Well, well, how could that be? I don't know. How, how do you mean, how can I be? How could you True. be a senior now and two years I'm ago? I'm 17 and I'm in 12th grade. I don't know. Right, so 10th grade would have been 15. I don't know. Can I maybe, be I, maybe I was a freshman. Maybe. End of my freshman year. Well, but, but hold on. Here's, here's what I want to know, That's Kelly. not the point. I know, but now I'm freaked out. Didn't you know where you were at in your life when this was going down? Like, yeah. when you were taking swing dancing, you know, what did you know you what classes, who were you hanging with? You know, didn't you know what grade you were in? Yeah, I did. What grade was that? Let's see. It was uh, 1999. <laughs> are, 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 are you making this up? No, I'm not. I just, I'm just, like, thinking about other stuff right now. <laughs> It's not really that important. I don't, like, it's not my question. Well, I, I understand. Mm. I was just trying to get a sort of picture of where, you know, if you were in junior high when this... Oh, no, I was, I was in high school. It was either my first or second year in high school. Okay. I, I'm just... I'm, I'm, Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm shocked that you don't know <laughs> it's meaningful to where us you were that, when you were dating yeah, this that guy. Yeah, a major event in your life went down and you can't locate it. You can't put it in your life history. It means something, and either means you're making this up, which I don't think so, or I'm some, not. I'm some, counseling for this. <laughs> right? There's something about this that you don't want to address. You think, you think you've blocked it out? I have anxiety about it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, maybe you're you're shutting down, and maybe you're kind of blocking it out and pushing it out. Do you think so? Well, my my question is though oh, sorry. that um um like right now. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Are you upset? Yeah. All right. Sorry. So, so oh, well, I'll give you a chance to compose yourself for a second. Okay. You, um, when is the last... What, what broke you up with this guy? What got you away from this relationship? Um, another guy came into my life, and I started seeing him, and... Um, how old was he? He was 18. Ugh. And you were and how I old? Was, and I was 16. So this, this had been going on for two years. All right. Jeez. Two years? And... What happened was, um, we I I took lessons from him, and then uh, I I started dancing a lot, and I uh, got to the point where I was good enough to teach lessons, and so I started teaching with him at different workshops. Did they get this guy? Um, I yeah, he was arrested. Good, he's in good. jail right now. Oh, Great. good, good, yes. yeah. I came to my Yay. Friend. <laughs> yes, he's hooray. <laughs> he's, he, he's he's teach. I uh, hopefully he's like uh, teaching the uh, sodomy trot. To uh, mm -hmm. the backdoor boogie right now, seven hundred pound black man. Actually, he, he his personality is like really likable or something. I don't know. I heard last that I heard was he's teaching a cellmate how to do swing dancing mm -hmm. or something. Boy. Swing something. something. Good Sounds yeah. interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Swinging yeah. something, yeah. dancing in heaven. So my, my question is, yeah, that um, right now let's, I'm trying to decide if I should um have him. Take a guilty plea because he's he's still on trial. Should have him and take a guilty could, plea. The thing that is really upsetting me is that he can only get between two and four years. Yeah. And yeah. he's actually already a two-time sex offender. Ugh. And he lied to us like nobody knew. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty well known. Like. Uh, okay. Well, uh, well, hold on. Uh, you should prosecute. Maybe we should broadcast his name. For you one should thing. prosecute this guy to the full extent of the law. Uh -huh. I mean, as much as you can possibly give him Agreed. is what he should get. Okay. Right? Yes. But the thing is, it might be, it, it's going to be, like, really hard on me. Like, I don't know how, I, if I can handle it. I don't think it will be that hard. I, I think, uh, by the way, I, I know, but you've, you've, you've already went through the hardest part, which is the relationship yeah. with this dork. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you, you seem pretty able to talk about it, even though you're sort of defensive. I don't think it'll be harmful to you. In fact, it might be... This is one of the situations where it might be a good thing to sort of step out of the victim role a little bit and actually... Definitely. Yeah, reclaim. Reclaim your power a little bit. Right. The thing is that I don't even feel like a victim. Well, like, I, I well that's mean, it, part of the problem. It, it, it's, it's not... I mean, this guy's a manipulator. He's not a... He doesn't um, rape by knife point. Yeah. He's, he's more he, he, He's more of a psychological rapist. Uh -huh. And and I think you need to speak to the prosecuting attorney or the DA or whoever you need to speak to. Tell them all the feelings you have, sort of good and bad about all this stuff, and decide what you're capable of doing and do the most that you're capable of doing. Right. 
And uh, this, uh, these guys. Why would you want to not do like the most that you can do? Well, be, well be, she's afraid she's, she's freaked gonna, out. She doesn't want to sit up there. Well, she's and also going to they, they work count everything. They also work by shaming these poor victims. Right, right. I mean, they're victims, and so some of these people that represent these victimizers are themselves victimizers. Don't you think though that if you know, she went like you know for the full extent of punishment, that once you got the ball rolling, it would be easier? You know, like wait, but listen. These guys are going to get up there and try to make it seem like she manipulated him into a sexual act. Right. You understand? These right. guys are, yeah, are assholes. And, and right. And she, even though we all know she was a kid, I'm not quite sure what grade she was in, somewhere <laughs> between the seventh <laughs> and, and, and her third year of grad school, I think is what we got it narrowed down to. But, but she, in her mind, willingly went along with this guy and possibly phoned him a time or two. Do you know what I'm saying? So she feels somewhat responsible, even though we know she's not in her heart. She feels like, hey, I chased this guy down a time or two, probably, right. and is kind of freaked out about it. But guys like this just need to have a slug put in their head, especially the three-time losers. And, and you know, all these uh, fags from the ACLU that are always so worried about everyone's rights, you know. It just, Jesus Christ, can't we just put a, uh, can't we just burn something into these guys' foreheads so we know who they are? You, you really think people, you, you got a hankering for uh, underage, I'm trying to think of a good term for it. Yeah. You, 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 you like you, you like uh, twelve year old boys, for instance. You really think uh, eighteen months in the clink it gets rid of that? D don't they have therapy for these kind of people? Like, isn't there some kind of there, problem? There in, are some kind of program. They, they do, but it'd yeah. be like me going to therapy because I like big jugs mm -hmm. and trying to get it erased by talking to some guy with patches on his sleeves for an hour once a week. I, I wouldn't get rid of it. I would want it more. And thank God, it you know, means I'm all man. But guys like this, just, they need to be put down, especially if it's the third time. And I mean, imagine how outraged the parents are I mean, when you realize this guy was time? caught. I mean, yeah, what happens after the second time? Well, well that's, that's, I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. And, and here, here's the other thing that, and, and we're going on break, but the thing that steams my bean is, is, Oh, we don't have enough room in the prisons. Well, we don't got enough room in the prisons because we got a bunch of guys who are trying to sell hits of acid at a Grateful Dead concert sitting in there. Meanwhile, this guy's uh, banging his way through the seventh grade, and we got to get him out early to make room for the next guy who was caught with the dime bag. That, that drives me insane. It really drives me insane. I'm not saying guys who sell the tabs at the Grateful Dead are the pillars of society, <laughs> but let's not kick out the pedophiles. To make room for these guys. Thank you. you. Thank you very no, much. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Couldn't agree with you more. Hoovastank is here. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. We'll hear something else from them. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Hoovastank is our guest tonight. Woohoo! Yay! Uh, this is not my uh, theme song anymore. Why yeah, that? I thought we straightened that out. I've, I've replaced this. Um, uh, I now have a Hoobastank song as my uh, theme song. Well, that's good. Marku has... Uh, re yes. Yeah. There, there you I go. Like better. That, that's, that's a good theme song. Yeah. I like that. Let's see. What I'm saying is picture me walking in slow motion with the jacket slung oh, over I like the, over the I like shoulder. It. I see it. Some and I, I the enter background. the bar. No, I'm walking into a, a, oh, a bar, bar. And you see me do that peek down over my glasses thing at some hot chicks. They're sitting at a table to recognize Oh, me. this is what the hot chicks hear, though. But this is what they're hearing. <laughs> 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 it's always funny in the true? <laughs> it never gets old. It's the story of my life, too. It's right. all good. Marku has uh, replaced uh, Chris. Yeah. We're doing a little uh, round robin here. And uh, where the hell? Doug is uh, still here, though. He's the boo, anchor. Boo, boo, oh. yeah, boo. <laughs> He's the anchor of this guy. Marku is our closer, man. We gotta I'm, clo I'm closing it down. All right. They went to the bullpen. Marku has uh, come out in the uh, giant fiberglass golf cart. That's and, right. Uh, it is time to close. Now, this call interests me. Josh? Yeah, what's happening, guy? Hey, Josh, you're 24. What's up? <laughs> How you guys doing? Is Dr. Drew there? What's mm -hmm. Oh, I'm here. He's there. All right, sweet. Listen, I was from uh, Big Brother, Josh from Big Brother. Dr. Drew may remember me. No, I remember Josh. <laughs> How you know, wait, well, hold on. Which one is Josh from uh, Big Brother? Josh, this was Big Brother 1. 
Josh was Adam exactly from Big Brother One. And this is the, he was like the last. Oh, you were the last two, right? You were with yeah, Eddie and you. Uh, Eddie and Josh place. were the last two. He got second place. Which yeah. is is one of you? Is there three legs between? It, no, the Eddie. Four Eddie had the oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, there are. Eddie had the legs. Josh was the blonde guy. Okay. All right. Hey, Josh. I'm not black. Well, no, I said blonde. Blonde. I'm light. Blonde. Light skin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm kind of deaf right now. I'm just leaving the uh, Britney Spears concert with. Ooh. The girl, Good times. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's hey, I got to tell you, she's not that innocent. Yeah. She had uh, pretty close to front row seats, and this woman is half naked half the time. She didn't sing any uh, at all the whole night, did she? No, you know what? I don't know if she was lip singing or if she was actually singing the thing, but I don't think anybody was actually listening. I know all the guys in the crowd weren't listening. Yeah. They were just watching. I, I really think she has a personality disorder at this point. I... That's how I would classify her. In terms of what? She just seems that something's wrong with her. Yeah. She's, She's a stripper that sings, pretty right, much. Right, right. All right. Well, What's wrong with that, though? Well, that's well, true. Problem is, like, little kids like my daughter are into her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm laughing because I'm looking around and there's nothing but, like, you know, 5 to 15-year-olds, right. and they're just looking like at this girl like an idol. That's the problem. Yeah. That, that can't be the problem. problem. All right, so what? Oops, I did it again. So wait, how you been since Big Brother? I've been pretty decent, actually. You know, it was a great opportunity for me. I actually ended up winning a hundred grand after or before uh, Uncle Sam came and snagged uh, a quite a big portion away from me. Right. And uh, wow. you can't complain because I had just uh, just got out of college and uh, had some student loans to pay off and had to do all that stuff. What, my what, question, hold on. What oh, did what did Uncle oh, Sam uh, take out of that hundred grand? Take a big guess. Fifty. Uh, Fifty. Uh, I'm gonna say yeah, at least. I, I, I'd say he. I'd say he left you with like uh, fifty-two. Yeah, the forty-eight percent. Later, what he, he he wasn't that bad on me actually. Oh. What was it? He ended up taking thirty-two. Thirty-two. That's not bad that at all. Bad. So you know you can't complain. You're twenty-three Big years stuff. old when I left the house, and you end up with sixty-eight grand in your pocket. How can yeah. you complain about that? All right. You know everybody said, "Hey, you you ended up getting second. Eddie got first and walked away with five hundred grand, but I think he ended up only with two hundred eighty grand. Do you stay in touch with Eddie? Only. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Has, definitely. Has, Eddie yeah. actually just got done filming an independent movie up in Canada called Drop Dead Roses, playing the jerk boyfriend of some girl oh out there. Type but uh, he's doing well. Good. He's, uh, we always laugh. We, we, Eddie's a good sport about his leg. We always say, he's, you know, he's hopping along fine these days. <laughs> is, is his cancer in remission? I mean, it's gone? Yeah, complete, complete. Okay. You know, he actually lost his leg when he was 11. All right. And uh, out of anybody I've ever met in my entire life with a disability, he's... He's one of those things that never uses it to like an advantage. You know, it doesn't. That guy gets around better than most people I know with two legs. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, my question for you, Doctor Drew. Yo. I finally got a chance to actually sit back and watch all the tapes after I got out of the house. Hmm. And you gave a complete analysis of everybody, pretty much. And all I ever heard about myself was, "Hey, he seems like a nice guy," because you always said Josh is laying low, staying under the radar. And uh, I'm, I'm, I just basically. Uh, so you want you want me to you want me to criticize to give give a you know well let me take, be honest with you how, how, the way that show worked was uh -huh. they we would they would film it on Thursday live and they would call me Wednesday morning and go here's the question we're going to ask you okay and then I'd have 24 hours to sort of come up with an answer uh -huh. so they, this was not sort of my crafted idea of what I wanted to talk about this is the producer calling me going here's what you're going to talk about today. Right. Ready, so you were, go. You were very limited then. Oh, very limited. But Well, well give Josh... Uh, Drew, Drew, I can't spend 10 minutes on Josh, but give him right. a quick evaluation. Um, You're gay. Besides the gay <laughs> thing. No, he's, he's not gay. Josh is not gay. Well, bye. so... Oh, he would maybe yeah, buy. Same thing. Uh, yeah, I can't... I, I, all I remember about Josh is I was really troubled by this one night that he became emotional, and he was loaded also, um, that I thought he was being terribly manipulative of some of the women in there, and I didn't know what he was really up to, and so I'd be curious to know what he was thinking. Oh, wait a minute. I got a better question. How do you beat off in a house with all those cameras, <laughs> and that ain't worth you know, 68 grand? Question, but the, the true honest answer is you can't. Oh, you, how, many, how many days in that house? I was in there 88 days. 88 days? No beating off? That, uh, 68 grand don't even scratch that. That's got to be a record. How, how do you deal with a nocturnal emission? Me, me and Eddie always said we earned that money because we never touched ourselves for 88 days. 88 days. I would have uh, raped a knot hole in the fence <laughs> at uh, 88 days. <laughs> when I got out, but... Holy oh, shower. Right. Oh, you could beat off in the shower, couldn't uh. you? No, there was a camera right in the shower. There'd Are you like, serious? What? This is what we heard. There was a camera in the shower, and it didn't go out actually to like you know the internet, and it didn't go out to actual national television audience. But they put a camera in there. You know what? I, that's all right. It, it's probably in Japan somewhere. No, so. yeah, I was in that control room many times, and I did not see anybody take a shower, but I saw that shower camera. 
He did. There was a shower camera. How can you do that? Well, so then it didn't matter. Then you could have did it in the shower. There was a John camera, a shower camera. Listen, every I would have put a nice, uh, nice big dab of uh, Edge gel on that thing <laughs> and just beat myself to death in there. Just hit it with the shave days. cream and go nuts in there. A little Krylon you, red. Thought, you're wondering that after about two months, how can you get away with this? Yeah, that's why I thought the weakness of that show was they should have dealt with stuff like that. You know what I mean? That should have been what the show was about. Well, twenty, a twenty-four. Yeah. Well, he's twenty-four now. Yeah, he's twenty-three. I mean, Twenty-three-year-old guy not beating off for eighty-eight days is staggering to me. I know it sounds like I'm kidding, but that, that's 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 try eight that's days. A, no, <laughs> exactly. Would, would someone explode. I would. I put, it was just like well, there, there would be boom. There, there would be, be some, over. It would, it, yeah, no, there would be a mess on the wall somewhere. There would that's be right. some nocturnal. Uh, Blur tudge. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what? So they must have had. That's a technical term. There'd be nocturnal emission yeah. going on, uh, and so they must have been dealing with that a little bit. <clears throat> so yeah, that at least sticky sheets in the morning. Oh yeah. Oh my god. That's what we're talking about. I would be very agitated, and you know what? You know what happens when you don't beat off for like uh, three months. You you love every woman, and it becomes <laughs> really weird. Like you, you're talking to your mom, and you're going, "Hey, girl. Hey, maybe that was the. What thing are you wearing?" Thinky? Maybe that was what was happening with the previous caller who went out twice with that one girl. He didn't beat off. And he was in days. love. Yeah, every, all guys have to do it so they can so they can have perspective. So they can uh, think right. normally. Otherwise, it clogs. Yeah. clogs your clogs. Uh, thinking. Clogs, <laughs> Little clouds, way. clouds your thinking. Let's hear a uh, song from uh, Hoobastank. Are you uh, queued up? Yeah, there, let's Anderson? hear this. Oh, yeah, that would be fabulous. Uh, this uh, this song is called "Running Away." We are uh, going to take ourselves a little break. Uh, Doug and Marku are in the uh, studio from mm. Ubastank. And when we come back, we'll talk to uh, Kim. Who called two weeks ago at, she, at a broken wrist. Has questions called, about medication. The kid that wouldn't wake up. Oh, she, is she the one who pulled a Brody in her kitchen? Yeah. And busted a wrist like mopping or something. It was a comical way but, but, to <laughs> injure yourself. And then we were saying to her, well, why didn't you go to the hospital that night, in the emergency room? And she said, I couldn't drive. And we said, well, is there anyone in your house that could have driven? And she said, well, I have like an older son who could have driven me. And we said, well, why didn't he drive you? And she said, he can't, I can't wake him up. <laughs> and I said, well, wait a minute. You walk into the guy's room, you know, two in the morning, say I busted my wrist, and, you know, th throw some water on him, say it's time to drive mom into the hospital. He, he won't get up? Nope. No way. Impossible. Impossible to wake up. What? And I thought... That's weird, but I do remember growing up, there was always someone who had, like, an older brother or something that you could, you'd literally, like, just start punching the guy in the head, and he'd just roll over. I've got one of those, yeah. It's, it's, it's could, weird. It's like, yeah. you don't go to sleep, you die for eight hours a night. <laughs> like, how does that work? I wish I was one of those. Oh, me too. <laughs> uh, I got a... a, a a um a blue jay a farts uh, no. <laughs> a mile away and I'm, I'm popped up like what the f no, what no, happened no, no, no. earthquake the worst is you're sleeping you're all you're cozy all, all of a sudden you hear this little mosquito flying by your ear uh, and that's it oh. no, no, that's and that, that, the dive bombing it, gnat it, it ruins your evening you got your lights on you have your shotgun ready and where is that ruined that bastard where uh, he's dead now, you know what I I could watch. 70 hours of footage of just people in their underpants hunting in their bedroom. You know that thing? Yeah, you turn the light on. They should have that on Big yeah, Brother. Yeah, you're lying in bed. The light is off. You're just starting to slip into that uh, salmon. It, it's usually... But it's usually just a... Uh, a it's, it's usually just a quick strike. Yeah. Oh, what was that? What was yeah. that? And, yeah, but, but that's it. No way. No, now you're up and, and you're on the hunt. And then the next morning you wake up like a shotgun hits you, you're like itching all over. You got bumps everywhere. No, 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 no. Don't go. I don't. I, I won't go to bed. Huh? No, sleep. I will find it, or that will be that. <laughs> we will <laughs> let that be a lesson, all you mosquitoes <laughs> listening. I will Damn. hunt you down Damn and kill you, bastards. We'll uh, take a little break. And we'll be right back. Oh, and uh, Doug are both here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, what? Booba uh, stank and uh, Drew's just dying. Yeah, Doug, take your coat off. Oh, man. Oh, Doug's getting a shot. I just want to let everybody know I am deathly afraid of needles when I was a kid. Don't worry Sweet. about I'm it. I'm going for the on-air flu shot here. There's some raping going on here. Yeah. Ooh. Drew mm. is uh, going to give Doug a nice the push flu up. shot. Oh, great. Drew is so hell-bent on this. Oh, you guys not wearing sleeves. So that's very oh. convenient. I came prepared. 
Yeah, no, listen, it just it, don't even think about it. It's, it's a zero. You're never going to feel it. The needle just it, went in. Isn't it kind of like anal check. sex? He's done. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a lollipop. Give him that flesh lollipop. Hey, aren't you supposed oh, to take the needle man. out? Oh. Yeah, he's all good. No, hurt. of course not. That was great. Actually, can I have another? <laughs> <laughs> now he's hooked. He's hooked on the uh, rig. I'm addicted to flu shots. <laughs> all right, so uh, where was we? We were going to talk to uh, Kim, who's 40, who uh, busted her wrist in the kitchen. I remember the call mm. two, three weeks ago. Kim? Hi. Hey. Now, how, how old was this son of yours, this uh, Rip Van Winkle? <laughs> <laughs> He's 20 years old. 20 years old. Yeah, and this I, slacker. And still no, living at no, home. He's not a slacker. He's, he gets up. He goes to work every morning. He never misses a day of work. What's he, what's he doing living at home? Um, well, because it's really expensive to live out on your own, and he pays rent. Oh, oh all right. Right. okay. Oh, yeah. He pays for his own insurance. We approve. Buys his own clothes. I mean, all right, all right. Um, he's a good kid, but so, he's just—he's one of those sleepers. And what? Uh, um, when you become a non-sleeper is when you become a parent, right, mm. Drew? Oh, 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 oh. I mean, that's when you hear everything. And that night, I had my other youngest one here, and I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want to drag him out either, okay. even if I could have got my older one up. All so right. Did you get your arm set? Yeah, I did, but not for a week because oh. Ooh, not for a week. Kept, yeah, my husband and my son and everybody just kept telling me, "Oh, it's just a sprain." All right, well, Don't now you're getting now you're getting weird on us. No, no. why? Because before I do. before it was a duct tape, you know. No, you before it was it's I can't good. go to the emergency room because I, uh, my son won't wake up. Now it's. I neglected myself for a week because everyone else was more important and convinced me that I was sort of being needlessly concerned. Well, what ended up happen happening with your wrist? Well, I finally um, went, uh, a, I don't know, about five days ago and had it x-rayed and um, they said it was broke. And they said it and they put me on some pain medication um, uh, called Ultraset. And... Um, they said it said on there if it doesn't help with the pain, contact your doctor. And um, I guess they changed the prescription, so that's what I did. They uh, changed it to Vicodin, of course. and um, they put 500 milligrams on it. But 500, I have to take two of them. Well, the 500 milligrams is just the Tylenol. Okay, so. Boring. Do you think, uh, see, I'm I'm a heavyweight, as Adam would say. No, that's all right. I can tolerate a lot of, you know, things, <laughs> drugs and stuff. Right, right, um, right. Not you, that I'm big and fat or anything like no, that. No, but you're 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 a sturdy woman, and it's going to take more than a six pack and <laughs> no, a couple of five hundred milligram Vicodin to get I, your panties off. <laughs> it is, but it's not because I'm big. R right. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm only five eight, a hundred and thirty pounds. He's, he's oh, okay. Nice. Oh, you're just you're just not a you're just not a lightweight. Fine. Yeah, I'm just I'm okay. just a heavyweight so, when it comes to being able to party and stuff. Right. Like that. So you want to know a, she's a drug addict. You want to know <laughs> how to activate <laughs> this. You want to you want to know what to do with this Vicodin. I want to know if it, is it safe. Am I going to OD on taking two uh, pills instead of one? Uh, um, it's it's not a good idea. I can, no. I'm able to handle it. Well, but you you are you know you you probably do have the addictive biology, and by doing that, you're really putting yourself in harm's way, and that is a big dose taking two. Shouldn't you just oh, take what the doctor true. tells you well, to take? It's and, not yeah. it's not it's not alleviating our pain. True. Yeah. Why are you such a wuss with this I stuff? Know. I do Adam, this all the time. It's fine. And Adam, yeah. I agree with you totally on the child molesters and with the drug dealer. Why they don't they they've got people in for like you say. A dime bag and got these child molesters running around. Yeah, of course. And, I mean, uh, I agree with you. What, 100%. what what drugs have you done, Kim? Just out of curiosity. Please. What drugs have you done? Just out of curiosity. Um. What do you mean, drugs for just yeah. pleasure? Yeah. Oh, I've done just about everything. <laughs> Heroin. No, 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 no. Coke, or. no coke. No, no, all no. All right, all right. No, my right. husband is out there listening tonight. He drives a truck every night. Hello, Mike. I love you. All right. <laughs> He's probably all. He's probably just did an eight ball of crank himself <laughs> with some he she hooker and a truck stop. Like no, he lo he would lose his job. All right, all right, baby, that's good. Calm down. <laughs> Look, uh, what about this then? The one five hundred milli 
mil- milligrams not doing anything. What if she breaks in half another 500 milligram and takes that? She's not getting any pain relief. She different people she cannot have different take more systems. than two. She cannot. That's all right. Take two. The Tylenol will um, shut her liver down. All right. Look, th- this Ew. poor guy's been on hold for an hour. He wants to know where Hoobastank got their Whatever. name in this. So do I. Mark? Yeah. How you guys doing? You want to know where the band got their name? Yeah. I, well, first all right. That's enough. <laughs> where did you get your name? Because we got well, 10 seconds. Um, what was it? Hoobastank is... Uh, is that unfortunate feeling when you go to the uh, doctor for a physical and... Uh, Would that be Dr. Drew? Uh, maybe. maybe um, so. And he or she goes down to grab your stuff and tell you to turn your head and cough. <laughs> it's that... Uh, yeah, exactly. It's that uh, unsettling, half-excited, half-scared feeling you get. I, we call that hoobastank. All right. Well, it depends. Maybe if it's a female and you got, you know, like, getting this they eye contact. Be, and you're doing like well, see, that's where the half-excited comes in. Oh, right. well, I, I see. Okay. That makes sense. No. We will uh, take a break and we'll be right back. All right. All right. Stank. I want to uh, thank him for coming in here tonight. Thank right. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was uh, our pleasure. And the uh, album Hoobastank is out. <laughs> it is out. As as we speak, it came out today. So uh, go out and uh, get our new friend's uh, CD, please. That would be great. That, that would and, be and, really and go nice. And go on uh, Hoobastank.com to find out where all the tour dates true, and true. Like that are. You know what? If for, for people who can't make the uh, CD release show tomorrow, I think it's going to be broadcast on uh, HOB. H-O-B. Dot com, oh, house of blues. Dot com. Really? Oh, really? So, yeah, oh, cool. All so. right, so check into that and find out uh, where they're going to be next and go see them. And until uh, David Allen Greer tomorrow night, until next oh, time, man. this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I'm angry at her, and, but I, I don't want to... Um, You're gay. <laughs> Drew, please. <laughs> Screw you, Drew. Yeah, Drew, you shouldn't even be on the show. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.